You are listening to the Hot Tip Bets Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Hot Tip Bets Podcast. We are finally into the NFL playoffs. Um, got the divisional round coming up this week, so we'll be previewing those four games, talking a little bit about the latest news and happenings in the NFL, um, as well as looking at uh, this past week's college football national championship, since we didn't touch that on last podcast, and as always, giving out some plays and some news for all of the college basketball action for this upcoming weekend. Um, but before we get into all of that, let's take a look at how... Um, our picks have done these last three days since the last episode. So starting out on Tuesday, January 12th, um, the first game we had that day, we had Eastern Michigan taking on Toledo. Toledo was 11-point favorites in that game. Um, Toledo ends up winning this game pretty easily, 96-63. to um, We've been on Toledo a few times this year, and they've really just been looking like a like a very good team. They shot very well in this game, 55.1% from the field, compared to Eastern Michigan's 36 or 39.7% from the field. So that was a definitely a big theory. You know, Keyshawn Sanders uh, shot his career high, um, 20 points off the bench for Toledo in this game. So... Get, Toledo gets the cover, pretty easy win for them in that one. Um, the next game we had, we had Ole Miss taking on Florida, Florida three and a half point favorites. Florida ends up winning this one pretty, not big, but 72 to 63. But if you watched this game, you know it really wasn't, it wasn't that big of a spread. Um, there was a point where I think with, a, you know, two, three minutes left, it was basically a tie game. You know, Ole Miss had the lead for a large portion of that second half. Um, and Florida, you know, put it on the, the heat at the end and was able to get the win, but um, definitely not not just a blowout win. There was definitely some question marks in that game. You know, Colin Castleton puts up 21 points and 11 rebounds for Florida. So, you know, he gets that double-double. I um, mean, you know, Florida rebounds pretty well in this one. 39 rebounds on the game compared to Ole Miss's 30. Um, you know, so Florida gets scrapes out with the win and the cover, but definitely this Florida team is not exactly what I expected of them, you know, even with this win. Um, I don't know how many more times we would be betting on Florida, um, you know, after that Kentucky game for sure. And after this one, it didn't even look the greatest. So we'll see what happens with Florida as we move through the season. Um, but the next game we had, one that I feel like we definitely should have won, um, was Syracuse versus North Carolina. Syracuse was four-point underdogs in this one. Uh, North Carolina ends up winning by six, 81 to 75. Um, Garrison Brooks and Armido Baco um, both put up double doubles for North Carolina. So North Carolina definitely had a huge day um, from their offense. North Carolina, 48 rebounds on this one. Syracuse only 31. And that was kind of the story of this game. Syracuse did shoot the ball very well. Um, so did North Carolina for that matter. But Syracuse just wasn't pulling down those second chance opportunities and just really wasn't taking them away from, from North Carolina too much. So they don't cover that four point spread. But we end Tuesday at two and one. Um, so not the worst. Um, now moving on to Wednesday, uh, we had, I think there was originally three games scheduled. Um, I don't remember what they all were, but two of them ended up getting canceled. Um, you can look back at the last podcast to see exactly what those were. But the game that didn't get canceled, we have Duquesne taking on Dayton. Dayton six and a half point favorites in this one. Um, and another game that we won, uh, Dayton ends up winning this one pretty, not uh, pretty easily, I guess you'd say 72 to 63, you know, not the greatest of these blowout in the world but in that second half they definitely put the gas on um shot very well you know Dayton hit 41.7 percent of their shots from beyond the arc in this one while Duquesne only 17.6 so um really hard to win college basketball games in this era when you're only making 17.6 percent from the on the arc especially when your defense isn't you know a super stellar defense you know you're not you're not Clemson or Virginia it's uh it's hard to hard to make that up so um, and as far as Tuesday, or Thursday's picks go for January 14th, um, currently those are all um, either taking place or set to tip off later tonight. We have FAU taking out an FIU minus five, Bryant minus four and a half for St. Francis, and Southern Utah plus six and a half for Eastern Washington. So definitely take a look on the website and on Twitter um, to see how those ones end up doing. So that about wraps that up for as far as how last podcast picks ended up. Um, but let's take a little look before we get into the college basketball picks for this upcoming weekend. Um, let's touch a little bit <clears throat> on how the uh, national championship, the college football national championship that is ended up going. And it was just, it was a great game for Alabama. Um, Alabama showed that they are easily, 
number one team in the country, you know, one of the best teams ever, one of the best college football teams ever, you know, you can make that argument, like, last year's LSU team was basically, I, th- I think no one disagreed at the time that, that that was the, I don't know about best team ever, but definitely best season ever, I mean, they just play out of their minds, and this Alabama team this year definitely <laughs> gives them a run for their money, you know, three uh, um, top Heisman finishers, um, and, you know, uh, Mac Jones, Filled the two shoes very well. You know, Devonta Smith, Heisman winning wide receiver, played very well in this game. You know, three touchdowns, 215 yards, I think it was. Um, just had an, and that was all in the first half. <laughs> you know, he did it. Uh, I think it was a dislocated finger or something, whatever it ended up being. Or, uh, I don't even, I don't remember what his injury was, but whatever his injury ended up being, um, ended up not playing the second half, which I think if it was, it was kind of one of those injuries that they needed him, he could have played probably, but, um, at that point, they'd, there's really no point for him to, you know, go back out on the field and risk doing something stupid. Um, but yeah, Alabama, Alabama was just a very good team. And, you know, to finish this season, you know, they beat, you know, what's as far as final rankings, they beat a number two Ohio State. They beat a number four um, Notre Dame. They beat a number five North Carolina. They beat Georgia. They beat Florida. They beat, they beat basically, there's no, like, as far as someone saying, oh, you could put an asterisk in this because of COVID. For Alabama winning this, you absolutely can't. Alabama played as tough as a schedule as you're ever going to play um, in any year, let alone a COVID year. So this Alabama team was one of the better, is, is one of the best college football teams I've ever seen and one of the best Alabama teams I've ever seen. Um, but speaking of those Alabama teams, um, there's a couple of crazy stats that come out of this game. You know, besides it being Nick Saban's uh, seventh um, national title, you know, sixth at Alabama after getting that first one. I'm at LSU, so he finally passed Bear Bryant um, in national titles. But it's crazy to think that if you were recruited by Nick Saban and played football at the University of Alabama, as long as you play, like stayed there for three years, you won a national title. You, the, no matter, there is not a player who has come through the University of Alabama who has not won. Sure, there's a couple, of, you know, some of the transferred out and whatnot, ones who have left and, and stuff. But if you played at least three seasons, you know, even the guys who went to the draft early after that third season, they all have national titles. Um, and this this year, you know, um, kept that streak alive, obviously, because it would have it would have ended had that not happened. But it's just an absolutely crazy stat to think that um, one coach can, can do all that. And, you know, Nick Saban... He, he, you know, he's not the, you remember like the Dolphins didn't one nine, not a great coach. Um, and we'll get into Urban Meyer doing the same thing here in a little bit. Um, but Nick Saban got obviously the best college football coach of all time. Um, you know, surpasses Bear Bryant. And I feel like Nick Saban, <laughs> we could end up seeing a, a very similar Bear Bryant story. You know, Bear Bryant said, um, after they won their Liberty Bowl, they're <laughs> ending their, in um ending his run at Alabama, they have questions like what he's gonna do. He's like, I'll probably just die in a month and well, four months later he was dead. So um congrats to Nick Saban, congrats to Alabama on winning another national title. Um so that about wraps it up for the college football season. Um so we'll see college football um come August, but let's take a little bit look um with that, that means we are now in the heart of college basketball season. Um, no more, you know, two colleges games to worry about. Um, don't have to worry about splitting TV time on ESPN with college football and college basketball. We can just focus completely on college basketball. Um, and one team that is making a case for, I, I guess, for how good they are this season is Michigan. Michigan absolutely destroys Wisconsin the other night. Um, just, you know beats them up <laughs> into oblivion. Um, they go, they shoot up to number three in the country. And this Big Ten this season is just a tough Big Ten. You know, all these teams have kind of, when they play each other, they just beat each other. And, you know, none, no one team, except for maybe Illinois right now, is that team that kind of sticks out. But other than Illinois, it's, it's just it's crazy to think who's going to win the Big Ten. And even the Illinois, they're a team that's, you know, come March is probably going to have two or three questionable losses it's like oh how they lose this game um not questionable in the sense that you know it's it's a crazy loss to a crazy team i'm saying questionable as in oh they didn't play great against iowa they didn't play great against wisconsin so um personally i don't know how how good all these big 10 teams stack up um seems like it's been a while since we've seen a big 10 team really have a ton of success um in the in the as far as winning a national championship we haven't seen it well i mean yeah sure we saw michigan state um in the final four i guess the last final four um two years ago now but the last final four so i don't know it'll be interesting to see how the big 10 ends up shaking up 
Well, one team that's kind of come out of nowhere this season is the Clemson Tigers. You know, Clemson may just be a basketball school now, um, and it's starting to show. You know, they have the number one defense in the country, uh, passing, you know, Virginia in their own conference um, for that role. And this this Clemson team is just is just good at basketball. You know, if you watch them play, um, their defense they can shut down anyone in the country. You know, it'll be interesting to see because um, they play Cle- uh, Virginia this upcoming weekend. It'll be interesting to see how this Clemson team um, shapes up against that Virginia team. So definitely something to watch out for there. Um, but one conference that is probably I guess the most top heavy, but not even top heavy, just kind of the most it's probably the best conference in the country this year is the Big Twelve and. Um, in the Big 12, you know, the team that we always see as the top is Kansas. Kansas loses yet another game, um, this time losing to Ohio State. You know, Cade Cunningham drops 18 points on this Kansas team. You know, it's weird Ohio State, or not Ohio State, Oklahoma State, that is, um, playing these games. They know they don't exactly know what their, what their postseason future looks like for them. Right now, it appears that they would be playing, um, just based on how that whole appeal process works and whatnot. Um, but who knows what's going to happen come March um, for Ohio State. I feel like they probably will be playing. Um, we have the number one player in the country that kind of helps the NCAA make their decision a little better. But who knows what happens to uh, um, Oklahoma State there. Um, but one team that not necessarily come out of nowhere in the Big 12 this year, but definitely, I guess they're not even at the top of the Big 12. Baylor's the top of the Big 12. But that's Texas, you know. Um, after last year, Shaka Smart, you know, was kind of a game away from being fired. It's crazy to see Texas, you know, in the conversation for one of the best teams in the country. You know, I think they're five in the latest AP poll. Um, and yeah, they beat West Virginia this past weekend. So definitely another team to watch out for in the big 12. Um, but that's enough talk about college basketball news. Let's get into some picks for this week. Um, starting out on Friday, January 15th, the first game we got, we got Liberty minus seven and a half taking on Stetson. Uh, Liberty comes into this game as the 118th ranked team in the hot tip at rankings at 11 and four on the season. Stetson uh, three and five on the season as the 120 or 224th ranked team in the hot tip bet rankings. Uh, one thing Liberty has done very well this season is shooting their free throws. You know, um, making free throws at the end of games is a great way to to win basketball games, especially in college. You know, they've and Liberty has been doing very good at that. 37, not 37, 73.5 percent from the free throw line, while Stetson only 65.2 percent from the free throw line. And Liberty's also done a great job just shooting shooting the ball in general. You know, a 57.1 effective field goal percentage, while Stetson a 48.3 effective field goal percentage. Um, and, you know, Liberty also is just a good team on both sides of the basketball. 81 in offensive efficiency, 133 in defensive efficiency. Stetson, 223 offensive efficiency, and 269 defensive efficiency. Um, and kind of the one thing um, with all those stats or whatever, but, you know, one thing that kind of sticks out about this Liberty team is not turning the ball over. Um, only turning it over on 14.9% of their possessions. Stetson, on the other hand, turning it over on 25.2% of theirs. So um, while Liberty is a decent favorite in this one at uh, 7.5, I definitely take um, Liberty to win this game. So I'm going to be taking Liberty minus 7.5 in that one. Now the next game we got um, is a bit of a late one um, out on the West Coast. We got Fresno State taking on Nevada. Nevada 6.5 point favorites in that one. Fresno State comes into this game as the 190th ranked team in the hot tip at rankings. Nevada 122. Um, this Fresno State team, one thing they've really struggled with this year is free throw shooting. You know, 59.5 from the free throw line. Nevada on their other hand, 75.4%. Um, and Nevada's also done a good job shooting the three ball too, 34.6% compared to Fresno State's 28.9%. Um, you know, Fresno State just not not as polished on both sides of the ball. You know, 1876 on offensive efficiency, 157 defensive efficiency compared to Nevada's 125 offensive and 114 defensive. So, um, well, Nevada, again, a little bit of a slight or a big, bigger favorite in this one. I mean, six and a half isn't a huge favorite, but um, I do like Nevada to take care of this and that. So Nevada minus six and a half for that game. Um, the final game for Friday's card. We got Cal State Bakerfield taking on Hawaii on the island. Hawaii minus one or one point favorites in this one. Um, and this is actually going to be Hawaii's first kind of, I guess, true home game. They played a couple, I guess, first home game against the D1 team. They played a couple of uh, um, smaller, I think they're D2. I don't know. I, I'd honestly have to look it up. But like Hawaii Pacific, maybe. I probably said that wrong. I don't remember who they played. But Hawaii played a couple of uh, non-D1 teams. Um, at home on the island, but this will be the first uh, game where 
Um, an opposing team travels to the island this season. So Hawaii does come into this game at 3-1 and one on the season. Cal State Bakerfield 7-4 and four on the season. Hawaii doing a very good job shooting the basketball in their game so far this year. 35.6% from 3 with an effective field goal percentage of 54.7. Cal State Bakerfield 29.7 from 3 um, with only a 44.4 effective field goal percentage. Um, and Hawaii's just done a very good job not turning the ball over so far this year. 15.5%. Um, their possessions turning it over while Cal State Bakerfield um, turning it over on 20.3% of their possessions. So definitely like Hawaii um, to cover that small one point spread um, for the final play on Friday. Now moving on to Saturday, January 16th, the first game that we have on the car, we got North Carolina taking on Florida State. Um, Ken Palm has Florida State as three point favorites in this one. Um, North Carolina comes into this game at 8-4 and four on the season and the 34th ranked team in the hot tip at rankings. Florida State, uh, that was North Carolina, I might have Florida State. But anyway, Florida State, 6-2 and two on the season um, and ranked 12th in the hot tip rankings. Um, and this one North Carolina team, well, they have put together some wins here um, recently. and They haven't played terribly. They just haven't shot the ball nearly as well as you would expect a Roy Williams-led team to shoot it. You know, only 29.3% from beyond the arc, while Florida State, 37.2%. Um, you know, their free throws aren't horrible, 68.4, but Florida State a little bit better, 71.1. Um, their field, effective field goal percentage is not very good at all, 45.8%, um, while Florida State, uh, 53.8% effective field goal percentage. Uh, and the Florida State team is just a really good offensively, you know, coach team, player team. You know, they got a lot of talent on this roster, you know, 13th adjusted offensive efficiency, while North Carolina 60th in adjusted offensive efficiency. So I definitely like Florida State. Um, to cover the spread in that one. Um, the next game that we have on Saturday's card um, is another ACC game. We got Syracuse taking on Pittsburgh. Um, Ken Palm has Syracuse as two point favorites in this one. Syracuse comes into this one as a 31st ranked team in the hot tip at rankings. Pittsburgh, the 84th ranked team. And Syracuse has done a very good job of not turning the ball over so far this season, only turning it over on 17.7% of their possessions, while Pittsburgh turning it over on 20.5%. Um, but one thing that really sticks out about this Syracuse team to me is how good they have been shooting the free throw, you know, making those last second shots um, to win games and to close stuff out. 77.7% um, from um, the, the free throw line, while Pittsburgh only a 60.9% um, from the free throw line. Um, and Syracuse, you know, 50th in offensive efficiency, while um, Pittsburgh 127 in offensive efficiency. I think Jim boheim has got this team looking good, looking in the right direction. You know, the ACC is kind of a weird conference this year, um, you know, with Clemson and Syracuse and Virginia and just kind of everyone in the in the ACC is, is just weird this year. It seems like it doesn't seem like the, some teams that you would expect to be good, not quite as good. Other teams um, doing better than expected. But I think Syracuse takes care of business in that one. So definitely like Syracuse to cover that spread. Um, the next game we have, move out west. We got a um, Pac-12 showdown. We got Stanford taking on Colorado. Um, both these teams are very good teams. You know, Stanford comes into this one as the 27th ranked team in the rankings. Well, Colorado 34th in the hot tip rankings. Um, and both these teams, very similar records. You know, Stanford 8-3, and three, Colorado 9-3. and three. Um, But Colorado has done a very, very very good job of shooting free throws this season. 84.5% from the free throw line, which is absolutely insane, especially this late in the season. Um, you know, Stanford, on the other hand, 71.3, nothing. That's not a terrible free throw percentage, but it's not 84.5. Um, that's for sure. And then, and then, you know, Colorado shooting doesn't really stop there either. They've also shot the three very well this season, 35.4% from three, while Stanford only a 29.6 from three. Um, and, you know, Colorado's also turned the ball over. Um, less than this one, only turning over on 17.0% of their possessions, while Stanford 21.9% of theirs. Um, so, you know, Colorado just has the better overall offense, you know, 29th in off or 26th in offensive efficiency, while Stanford 75 in offensive efficiency. So I think Colorado takes care of business and covers the spread in this game. Um, now the next game we had, we touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, in the college basketball news, we got Virginia taking on Clemson. Clemson or Virginia, I mean. Um, looks to be slight underdogs coming into this game. Um, and this is going to be a very, very defensive heavy game. You know, Clemson, the number one defense in the country, was just kind of a shocking statement to say that I didn't really, I didn't probably, if you told me a couple weeks ago, I'd be saying that I wouldn't believe you. And Virginia, on the other hand, number two defense in the country. So both these teams come in with high powered defenses. Um, Virginia, though, comes in in my rankings a little bit higher as the eighth ranked team in the country. While Clemson, 
um, actually isn't quite that high. It was only coming in at 38th. Um, that has a lot to do with Clemson's struggles on offense. You know, 72nd in offensive efficiency, while Virginia 33rd in offensive efficiency. Um, and Virginia's also just done a very good job at shooting the ball. You know, 36.4% from three compared to Clemson's 33.9%. Um, and, you know, Virginia shooting the free throws very well, 79.8% compared to Clemson, 72.3%. Um, and Virginia is a better effective field goal per shooting team, 70 or 50, 50, God dang, I can't say it, 57% effective field goal percentage for Virginia compared to Clemson's 49.7%. So um, I think Virginia um, takes care of business. I think they probably beat Clemson outright in this one. So definitely like Virginia to cover that spread in this game. Um, the final game that we have for Saturday's card we got the battle for Oklahoma. We got Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. Now, both these teams are kind of in that weird spot in the Big 12. They're kind of right next to each other where they're not the, you know, the top tier, top five teams in, you know, Kansas and Baylor, um, Texas Tech, West Virginia. Um, and I'm missing someone, but, you know, they're not the top five, but, the, you know, they're not Kansas State or TCU or, you know, Iowa State bad. It's just these two teams... <laughs> They're just kind of in the middle. You know, Oklahoma comes into this game as the 32nd ranked team um, in the hot Tibet rankings. Oklahoma State, 66. Um, and Oklahoma has done a, they've kind of sneakily done a good job shoot, or a really good job shooting the ball this season. You know, 34.3% from three, 79.3% from the free throw line. Um, you know, Oklahoma State not terrible at 32.5% from three, but their 69.3 uh, field three throw percentage just isn't quite um, top tier as far as college basketball goes this season. Um, and Oklahoma State has also turned the ball over a little bit more, turning over on 19.2% of their possessions, while Oklahoma only turning over on 15.1% of theirs. Um, and Oklahoma, just a more efficient offense team, 17th in offensive efficiency compared to Oklahoma State, 49th in offensive efficiency. So I think Oklahoma takes care of business um, and beats Kate Cunningham and Oklahoma State in this game. Um, now moving on to Sunday, January 17th, um, we got Sacramento State taken on Idaho State. Ken Palm has sacked Romano State. Um, it's a slight one-point favorites going into this game, so pretty evenly matched team between these two. Um, Sacramento State comes in as the 221st ranked team in the Hot Tibet rankings. Idaho State, the 287th ranked team in the Hot Tibet rankings. Um, one thing that's very impressive about this Sacramento State team, um, and it's not a stat that you really look at too often, but it's kind of one that just popped out to me. Sac State only, gets, only has gotten blocked on 3.4% of their um, shot opportunities this season, um, which is the second lowest in the country. Idaho State, on the other hand, 7.3, which is actually extremely high, um, especially at this point in the season. It's kind of crazy, crazy number there. Um, and the Sacramento State not turning the ball over too much, only 17.7% .7 of their possessions. Idaho State, not very good at all. It's 26.6% of theirs. Um, Sac State has just also shot the ball better. You know, 35.6 from the three point line. Um, and 76.1 from the free throw line. And, you know, all Idaho State only making 32.2% of their threes and 71.3% um, of their free throws. And Sacramento State's just a better team. You know, 4-1 on the season compared to Idaho State's 5-5 Idaho State's five and five on the season. So definitely like Sacramento State to take care of Idaho State in that game. And the final game that we have on uh, for Sunday, um, we got Evansville taking on Bradley. Now, Ken Palm actually has Bradley um, it's pretty big favorites in this one as 10 point favorites. Um, but I actually really like Evansville coming into this game. You know, Evansville hasn't, didn't start the season out great. You know, they're six and six on the year, but I think they've won. Uh, I don't remember the actual step, but they're either like five and one or four and one um, in the last however many games. Bradley, you know, seven and four on the season. So not a terrible start by them either. Um, both these teams have been playing pretty good as of late. Um, but Evansville has been shooting very, very good, especially from three, 37.6% from beyond the arc. Um, while Bradley only 32% from beyond the arc. Um, and the free throw percentage about pretty even, you know, 71.6% for Evansville, 70.9% for Bradley. Um, but Evansville does have a slightly more efficient uh, field goal percentage with 51.5 compared to Bradley's 48.7. Um, and Evansville's just done a very good job not turning the ball over, only turning it over on 16.8% of their possessions, and Bradley 19.3% of theirs. And when you're giving this Evansville team this many points in this game, I don't see how they don't cover that spread, um, especially in this game. So I really like this game. You know, I, that's kind of one of my been one of my favorite things this year. Um, unfortunately, we don't have Drake, but betting on Missouri Valley basketball on Sundays um, has been pretty good for me this season. So definitely like Evansville to cover that spread in that game. Now, moving on, the final day we got for this card, 
uh, Monday, January 18th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, so we got kind of a few basketball games happening that day, but um, only one for this card, and that is UNC Wilmington taking on Towson. Um, UNC Wilmington comes into this game as the 205th ranked team, Towson the um, 203rd team, so very evenly matched teams um, as far as the rankings go. But Towson has really struggled to win games this year, 1-4 and four on the season. Um, while well, UNC Wilmington six and three on the season, and UNC Wilmington has done a very good job shooting the ball this so f- thus far this season. Thirty six point seven percent from three, Towson twenty nine point six percent from three, um, and UNC Wilmington also very good from the free throw line at seventy five percent. Towson only seventy point eight percent. UNC Wilmington is more efficient um, on offense, one sixty four offensive efficiency compared to Towson's one eighty three. Um, and they, and, and that also, that shows in their effective field goal percentage, you know, 50.3% effective field goal percentage for UNC Wilmington, while Towson only a 44.3 effective field goal percentage. So, um, definitely like UNC Wilmington to take care of business in this one. Um, I think they can easily, uh, beat this Towson team. So UNC Wilmington is the play for that game. And that about wraps it up for this podcast's, um, college basketball plays. So let's move on to the NFL. Um, not a whole lot of NFL news, I guess, <laughs> for the last couple of days. You know, most, a lot of teams anyway, most majority of the teams, you know, all but eight teams um, are entering their off season. So um, news trickles out there, but not a whole lot of groundbreaking news day to day. But one big thing that has happened, um, you know, we haven't seen any coaches get hired necessarily yet, except for one. We finally saw our first one. Looks like Urban Meyer is going to be the next head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Which I don't know if I like the move, to be quite honest. Yes, Urban Meyer is a great coach, you know, national champion winning college football coach. But I think the, the power of Urban Meyer is not the play calling. I think the power of Urban Meyer is the recruiting and getting his guys on the field. And while sure in the NFL you can pay players and you can get your guys there still, I just think with a competition level so much higher than what he had, you know, was dealing with um, when he last coached a game in the Big Ten. I mean, let's be honest. No one's really competed with Iowa, Ohio State at all in the Big Ten, and a lot of that has to do with recruiting. You know, Ohio State had has a top recruiting class in the country every year. You know, they have always have, it seems like, a couple, you know, first-round draft picks, and most of the time a top 10, if not top 5 draft pick, you know, um, with guys up there. And I just really don't know that Urban Meyer is a great fit in Jacksonville. Granted, I think he will be a good fit for Trevor Lawrence, assuming they take Trevor Lawrence. Um, and they don't do something stupid <laughs> to address uh, Justin Fields or something like that. But I think I think Urban Meyer and uh, Trevor Lawrence will work out. Um, but I just don't know. I don't know that Urban Meyer would have been my first coach. Actually, I, I know he wouldn't have been my first coach because the first coach that I would have hired um, would have been Eric B. Enemy uh, from Kansas City or even Robert Salah from uh, the 49ers. I mean, those are, are obviously, I think, the number one and number two um, coaching candidates. So if, if those two don't get hired somewhere, it would be absolutely insane. Um, but I don't know. I think Urban Meyer could work out. I think it's probably not going to work out if we're being quite honest. I think it's probably going to end up being like a, a Nick Saban situation. I would not be shocked um, if Urban Meyer ends up at USC or Texas or somewhere like that, you know, maybe Notre Dame <laughs> in the next five years. So um, I think his stint in Jacksonville will be very short lived, but I guess I could be wrong and eh, who knows? We'll see what happens there. Um, but one other thing that we have before we get into the weekend picks for the NFL, um, the Rams have ruled out John Wofford for this Sunday's game. Jared Goff will be starting that one. Um, and while they are, I think they're like six and a half point favorites currently against the Packers. As much as I hate to say this is the Cardinals fan, you know, cause the Rams were the team that <laughs> kept us out of the playoffs. I mean, it doesn't matter. We're going to get destroyed anyway. But (laughs) the Rams, the Rams are an interesting team. And they seem like a team that could maybe upset this Packers team. I mean, I don't want them to. um, But who knows what could happen there. So that'll be a very fun game to watch um, this weekend. Um, Now getting into the NFL picks for the divisional weekend. um, There is no picks for um, Saturday. Um, just don't really like either of those games. And, you know, we haven't done too well in the NFL this season, so don't really want to push anything. Um, but moving on to Sunday, there is one game that I like on Sunday slate, and that is the Buccaneers taking on the Saints. You know, Buccaneers come into this game um, as slight underdogs, three-point underdogs for this one. And I really, really like this Buccaneers team. You know, Buccaneers 12-5 and five on the season, Saints 13-4. and four. Um, 
No, both have covered the spread decently. Buccaneers six and eight against the spread. Saints ten six and one. Buccaneers were 9-8 and eight against the spread. I think I said that wrong. Um, but the Buccaneers have done a good job putting up points this season. 30.76 points per game compared to the Saints. 29.59 points per game, which, you know, pretty evenly matched there, sure. But the Bucs are underdogs in this one. The Bucs under Tom Brady. Um, and more importantly, I think, um, at least as a Cardinals fan, that is. Uh, more importantly, um, under Bruce Arians, have moved the ball extremely well. 391.3 yards per game. Saints, 377.06. Um, and one, one stat that was kind of surprising, um, these teams have actually done a really good job not turning the ball over. They actually have the same, you know, both teams only turning it over 1.06 times per game, um, which while Tom Brady, that's up a little bit from, you know, some past seasons, um, as far as his interceptions have gone, he has been playing very well as of late. Um, and that is very much shown in their ability to limit stupid mistakes. You know, only 5.12 penalties for 43.47 yards a game compared to the Saints' six penalties for 60.29 yards per game. And I think, I know, if you're like me, you're tired of watching Breeze Brady um, for what seems like the hundredth time, you know, after, you know, we had that game last year uh, where that's all they did was talk about it. This will be the third matchup um, this season for Breeze and Brady. And I think Brady, you know, after his not so great performances the last two times against the Saints, I think he's going to take care of business. You know, I think, you know, playoff Brady is uh, is a different player than um, regular season Tom Brady. So I like the Buccaneers to cover the spread in this one um, with the plus three in that game. And that about wraps that up for the picks for this week's podcast. Um, so, yeah, make sure if you haven't already checked out the computer model picks over on the website, you go check those out. Um, every day there's horse racing picks up there, college basketball picks for, you know, all the games happening, you know, up to like 120, 130 games on Saturday, as well as NFL playoff picks. Um, and also, you know, NBA season just started up. So got picks over there. Plus the NHL just started up the other day. Um, so got all the NHL picks, um, up there. Um, if you want to take a look at the college basketball rankings, you know, the official, I guess, graphic or whatever drops on monday but the 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 rankings are updated daily over on hottipbest.com so you know if you see the picks you can go check out the rankings um for those and yeah all the results are posted on the website for all of the podcast picks i gave out here plus all the computer model picks um all that updated daily so definitely take a look at that if you're not following me on instagram and twitter make sure you go follow me at hot tip bets chris um and also make sure you're following the hot tip bets account on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, if you're watching here on YouTube, make sure you do that. Um, don't also don't forget to, you know, follow on TikTok, Snapchat. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast form, or even if you're not, if, wherever you're hearing this at, make sure you go subscribe to the podcast um, on whatever platform you listen to. Download the podcast, listen to it, um, re-download it, whatever you got to do. Um, definitely helps out as far as those numbers go. So, and yeah, that about wraps it up. For this week's episode, or I guess this weekend's episode of the Hot Tip Bet podcast, and I will see you all on Tuesday.